We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Life is only better with brunch talk. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Prescribed by nine out of 10 doctors and the 10th one did not have a heart. <laughs> the 10th one was not a real they doctor. They don't have any dating problems, so they don't need it. <laughs> brunch talk makes you happier, healthier, smarter, all of it. All the earths. It's true. We answer <laughs> all the tough questions that you're thinking, you're dwelling about, you're asking your friends about. We're here for you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Someone's going to do the Lord's universe. work, right? <laughs> oh my God. We went there. We went there. Oh, y'all. Like, we're just saying all the wrong things right now. Y'all, please do not give us a bad review because of something we say on Brunch Talk. This is purely <laughs> us just unfiltered here. <laughs> question. Such a good question. How and when do you go in for the first kiss? And for more context... I actually want to call this out that this actually comes from a hetero woman. I And the only reason I say that is because I feel like we typically get this question more from hetero men. So the question is, how do I make the first move? For context, I don't have a problem asking guys out on the dating apps, but whenever I want to make a move when it comes to the first kiss, it feels awkward and I don't know what to do. It's not even a matter of being rejected. There's been times when I've been out with someone that was clearly very into me. It's more of just not knowing how to approach the topic. I'm just trying to recount all the times I did go in for the first move and I would say I was not sober. 100% yeah, of the time. I was going to say that too. <laughs> and I'm not That's sure. The key. That's the key right there. <laughs> I'm not sure if there was technique in it all. My current partner will tell you I went in for the first kiss. Oh, did uh, you? Yes, I did. It was Julie. You were there, but you I were not there, there for this kiss. Well, we all went out for karaoke. <laughs> I was not there like in the middle of you two. <laughs> Julie's like, here, go a little closer. You need She's a facilitator. Us. <laughs> That's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing would be more awkward. <laughs> He's so proud of the story because people always ask, like, who made the first move? He'll always say, UA did. She went in. She mouth raped me, which is true. <laughs> we were at karaoke, quite drunk, obliterated. He walked me home and I was just like, when the fuck is this going to happen? I was so impatient. I hadn't had sex in over a year while in a two year relationship. <laughs> like, I had not had a mouth on me in so long. <laughs> like, I just grabbed him. <laughs> and just went for it. He was so <laughs> surprised. He was like shocked. <laughs> like, did you? He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, no, stop talking. Keep kissing. But I would not advise <laughs> you to do that. <laughs> That's just telling you what not to do. I think going in for the first kiss oh is gosh. one of the sweetest things you can do, but also the most nerve wracking. So I understand why this will be mm -hmm. Really tough, especially coming from a hetero woman who, that you're just not expected to make that first move. And I would say that for the first move to go smoothly, it's like everything has to lead up to it. 
You almost have to like, mm, you know, yeah. do the flirting, do the affectionate touches. do Yeah. You know, you got to just like, it has to be a lead up. It cannot be a surprise attack like I did. I was going to say, I like can't even remember who made the first move in that regard. Like, I totally agree with this listener. I feel like women are slowly getting there with all of this. Yeah. The asking out, the messaging first on apps. I also felt like that felt pretty easy. easy. Yeah. Like there was a cliff, right? Like you're not used yeah. to doing it, but once you get over it, like, yeah, you can do it. I, can do this. I think this is the same, right? You're just not over the cliff right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree. It's like, how do you take baby steps? I personally think like doing the subtle like hand on thigh or like tap when you're laughing, like those are easy ones Mm -hmm. and if you can get to a place that you feel comfortable with those then one it could just flow and the person's like oh yeah okay this person's into me i'm ready Mm -hmm. or if they are receptive and then you're the one to go in for the next move which is the kiss like you said it's not going to come out of nowhere there's build up to it yeah so i definitely recommend starting there i don't know if this person has already done that but how do you just like kind of practice more of those subtle moves to build up to the big one. I mean, the other thing is like, you could just be like, I really want to kiss you right now. Like if you're like vibing. Yeah, that's so cute. Yeah. And it sounds like this person can read the room. It sounds like there's been situations where they knew the person was into them. I think that's a different situation too than going kind of cold. Right. Like mm-hmm. you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Very different. Yeah, absolutely. And like asking for that consent. We've had a lot of hetero men ask us about that. Should I ask for consent before going in for that first yeah. kiss? And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you can read the room. If yeah. like it's been yeah. stone cold the whole day, I no, probably would advise it. against like, <laughs> do it. she's probably going to be like, what the fuck? But start with the can. touch. Yeah. yeah, start with like, start with the flirting, start with the touch, even discuss kissing on a first date that's like a topic that you can bring up you know you can say what are you cool with on first dates and you know a little about kissing and you know do you think first dates should be more casual like you can have a discussion all around first dates and bring up kissing and then you can also say like how do you feel about the woman making the first move yeah if you just keep talking about it it plants a seed and it makes it much more natural when it's time to go in for the kill (laughs) but you gotta read the room and i think sometimes People don't read the room as well. No. And I think that's more important than going in for the kiss is learning how to read the room. I agree. That's why the baby steps are so critical, because if you laugh and hit someone's arm and they're not responsive, you could start to see that and you're not like in their face ready to make out with them. And they're like, holy shit, you know? Yeah. There's ways to ease in that. Do not put that pressure. I'm not saying that you should like figure out how to like maneuver in the situation, but I I do believe that like how you're set up with someone in the sense of like, what does that date look like? Are you sitting side by side at a bar or restaurant or something where it's easy to do that like light touch, you know? Right. Or I remember like with my partner, our first kiss was at a park. We were kind of like laying there together. And like, Mm -hmm. I think I might have like done some sort of touch and that gave him permission, right? So it's like, how do you do it in a way like if you're across the table? from each other like how are you gonna have a kiss it'd be really fucking awkward right. <laughs> like just get up and like lean across yeah like, some environments are just not conducive so i don't want you to like get too in your head like thinking like oh my god i have to like be in the perfect position and all that but just think about environment how it plays into it and start to put yourself in ways that like could bring a kiss to fruition if you wanted it to yes And people are always looking for signs. Yeah. You may be nervous about going in for the kiss. They're probably nervous about going in for the kiss, too. So the more signs you can give each other that this is something you want to do, the better. One thing is always, hey, do you want to go for another drink? Do you want to go for another bite? Do you want to go for a walk? Like when you want to continue the date, that is a major sign that a kiss is something that could be welcomed. And while you're doing that, I always like to do the arm in arm, like just to show I like being around you. Easy. You're not holding hands. It's not that committed, but (laughs) arm in arm. Like I really like being in your presence. This is what it feels like. When you get cozy, it's just easier to go in for the kiss. But what you do also need to think about 
about is the possibility of rejection. It is possible, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to be okay with that. And if you are rejected, if someone's like, I'm actually really not feeling it, or I don't really do a kiss on the first date, you have to be able to be okay with that. And that's hard to accept, but yeah. a rejection is information for you. And you can kind of like figure out what you want to do with that information. Yes. Yeah, so I want to go into that. Like, how do you actually deal with that rejection? And maybe like, you know, some stuff's <laughs> coming up for me as we do this of kisses that I didn't really want. So yeah, yeah. before we get into that, though, let's hold that thought for a quick message. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to ViaHemp.com and use the code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's ViaHemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over for $60. So head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. I definitely had a few stories pop into my mind, but I was just thinking about this when you were saying about like continuing the D. I remember during COVID too, of all times, because I was already like reluctant oh, to I remember kiss. Yep. And the guy asked if he could like come back and use my <laughs> yes. bathroom because we were at the park oh my God. and then like laid it on me. And I was like, holy shit, where did this come from? Because it didn't feel like we were vibing at all on this date. So I like thought I was just doing him a favor by letting him use the restroom before before he like drove back. Oh no. So the disconnect there. I don't know if this is a good thing. I just like went for it because I was like so taken back of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then after processed it. So I also like putting that out there is that like, even if someone does kiss back, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a slam dunk for oh. them. It's sad, but oh, true, right? And I think for me sad. too, I'm sure there were times on dates that I kissed someone and maybe later they were like, oh, did I want to do that? So just putting that out there. But have you ever been in a situation where like, someone tried to kiss you and you were just like, ugh, no. Like, I can't really think of any time that I've said like, no. <laughs> there was this second date that I went on and the second date was not as good as the first date and I was just not feeling it. Mm. We're in the elevator to go up to the restaurant, I think. And he's like, I really want to kiss you right now. And I said, I just can't. I just can't. And we went through dinner knowing that I said no, but I just was not feeling it. Okay. And then we parted ways after dinner and that was that. Like, I think he knew 
but it happens. I don't know. It happens. And you just have to yeah. be like, OK, cool. Well, let's we'll still spend the time together or not. It's up to you. OK. But it was pretty awkward. Not going to lie. It sounds a little awkward for sure. But <laughs> we clearly know what happened to this guy or maybe you do. But he's probably has moved on and is with someone else that's wonderful. He has not moved on, <laughs> pining after me, still texting me. Are you ready for that kiss? Six years later. Yeah, he's fucking moved on. He probably like married with six kids yeah, by so now. That was the point I was trying to make is it might stig in the moment. It might feel terrible. Yeah. It might be embarrassing. But years later, even a week later, let's be honest. A day later. A day later. It's like <laughs> an hour later. An hour said. later. It's it's a very immediate embarrassment. You move on. It's they do, you do, you'll just find someone that's a better fit that wants to kiss you. Yeah. That's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Or they kiss you anyways, and then you get that rejection text. <laughs> Who cares? I'm like now regretting all the people that I just like went for it because I didn't know what to do. Really? Yeah. You're one of those kissers. Like you're an um, empathetic kisser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll kiss you back because you went for it. Slash no boundaries. Bad. I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> empathetic or no boundaries is a better way to put it. But <laughs> you're like a people pleaser when it comes to kissing. I am. Yeah, I, I don't want to let you down. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you my oh mouth God. and my tongue. Maybe. I know. And then like you're in it and you're like, oh, why'd I do this? But oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Not really. Not really wanted, wanted to do this. Mm. But it will happen. Rejection kiss will happen or non-rejection Even kiss. those people, I don't remember any of their names. Oh, Any of the no. people that are coming to mind that I can think of? Like, do you remember that guy's no. name? No. no. Or what he looks so like. That's <laughs> Same. <laughs> I have like a very blurry image of a few yeah, people. Yeah, blurry. But, blurry. So even if you do it. Okay, we're saying this, this is coming back to the point, even <laughs> if you go in for it, they reject you, or they kiss you and then reject you, they're not going to remember you. I don't know if that's soothing or worrisome, but that's the truth. The lesson learned is, <laughs> if someone wants to kiss you, just like you want to kiss them, there's a lot of nerves involved. Yeah. People want the signs that you want to kiss and especially in today's climate a lot of hetero men are yes, hesitant to yes. make that first move to go in for the kiss so if you went in for the first kiss it's probably such a big relief for them that they're like yes yeah i don't have to think about all of that that i need to go through you just went in you made my <laughs> life easier so you're kind of doing someone a favor yeah you know think about it that way and if you're reading the room the risk is minimal if you're reading the room you're doing the subtle signs <laughs> and like we established even if it doesn't go according to plan say you misread like what was going on you're not gonna die your life is not gonna be over oh no you will find love no. again it's worth taking the risk and the chance because honestly the consequences aren't that big it's two seconds of uncomfortable awkwardness oh my god i just remembered another one. Ooh, <laughs> this brings Ooh. some shit up doesn't it <laughs> damn okay I've actually never said this on air, so I wonder if I should say this on air. No, I'm not going to say his name. There is a, <laughs> Probably a <good> now, idea. <laughs> I would call him like a C-list celebrity. He is now a C-list celebrity. Okay. No, more like B. He's more like a B-list celebrity that at the time that I met him in New York, he was a nobody yet. Mm. He owned a restaurant in New York. And I used to hang out with him at his restaurant. And he took me out to dinner once. I didn't think it was really a date because we were very friendly. And at the end of it, he went straight in for that kiss. And I yeah. turned the other cheek. Ugh. Yeah. I gave him my year. I did. We were at the subway station. We were saying goodbye. I remember this happened. It was actually out in broad daylight, too. So it was very public. And then he's like, oh, it's like that. <laughs> and I was like, it's like that. You didn't give me anything. Yeah. And then he never talked to me again, never texted me. Well, I'm definitely pressing you for who this is later. That's for I sure. I will. I will tell you later. <laughs> I don't want to throw him no, no. under the bus. But yeah, he got really pissed. And that's not cool. That's not, not cool. cool. No. Yeah. You it made me it. look at him in a different way. If someone rejects you, again, rejection is no reflection of who you are. No indication that someone amazing is going to like you tomorrow. Just let it go. There's no need to get angry or do any of that. 
But if you do get rejected, there's an opportunity there. You can say, oh, sorry, I misread that. Yeah, that's all you need to say. Yeah, like I misread that. But are you like, are you interested? Yeah. Like ask more questions, get curious. And maybe they just say, I just don't kiss on first dates. I am really into you. I like that. Yeah. Like give them an opportunity to give you more information about them instead of you making these assumptions. He was just like, oh, it's like that. I'm like, what? You know, what? what is your assumption? Yeah. I would have gone out on a second outing with him. I just That's didn't know him point. that well. That's a good yeah. point. But he totally just closed that door thinking, oh, it's like that. You're not yep. into it. I'm like, and then you became not into it because he got weird and defensive yes. and angry. I agree. Yeah. That's a good it's way to handle very, it. I just yeah. misread that situation. I misread that. Are you interested? Because I am yeah. obviously interested in you. Like, see what they say. If they really say no, it's just like, oh, I misread it. Yeah, I misread that. That's it. Cool. It's yeah. not that big a All deal. good. Liked hanging out with you. Oh, my God. I just had one come back to me <laughs> while you were saying that. I know. It's like a lot. Like, <laughs> it's like all the stuff that's been buried lane. for years. So there was a time that I had a guy friend and... I don't know if this was like a thing between him and his friends that they like had this method that they would just go in for the kiss like without even talking to the girl. Mm. So I was at a bar and I was trying to get a drink and all of a sudden this guy was like in (gasps) my my face and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't even know who you are. I haven't talked to you at all. Like, he was a friend of a friend. A drive-by kiss? Yes. And it wasn't like (laughs) a stranger. But then my friend that did it, like a Okay, so my friend, the mutual friend, he did the same move to my friend and then she went for it. So one out of two times. (laughs) Damn. She just kissed him back. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) No exchange at all. No exchange in either of these. I was like, what the fuck? And then she's like, cool. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess it just comes down to like (laughs) free kisses. (laughs) Are you into it? Are you down with it? But yeah, just I think lesson learned from this whole thing. He's in is the best way to go. Ease in. Yes. And it be okay with the rejection. Rejection yeah. is redirection. You get the information you want and then you can just move on with your life. Yeah. It's not rejection. <laughs> it's you misread the situation. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Cool. Great question. So glad that a hetero woman is asking this question. Yeah. And don't you feel it for all the men out there who've been doing this for years? Oh who've been my God, like, yes. trying to go in yes. for that first kiss. Yes. I feel for you all. That you had to do that. I like that it's becoming more equal. Like the distribution yeah. is there. It makes it a little confusing at times, but I think it's net confusing. net, it's for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. One day we'll get to the point where it's the norm for a woman to propose. That's my dream. Is that your dream? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sitting like a waiting, like a sitting duck for a guy is so archaic, I think. You can still propose. We'll save this for another Another episode. brunch talk. Another yeah. brunch talk. Another Julie day. Julie is going to, I'm going <laughs> to convince her to propose. So that's, no, I wouldn't. That's she's, the thing. She's but I like the, the way path we're on is what I'm trying Got to say. Got it. Okay. Yes, we're making progress. Thank you for that question <laughs> and for all of your, I'm sure this brought up some other stuff Ooh, for you all. Yeah. So. Definitely brought some stuff up for us. <laughs> Ask us for every 20 minute episode, Julie and I do, we stay on for an hour and a half after. It's <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> like let's unpack that processing. more. <laughs> Who was that guy? I need to know. <laughs> so maybe we'll release a, a really like unedited version of yeah. these one day. If we get um, enough five star reviews, maybe oh, we'll reveal. Oh, great incentive. Great incentive. <laughs> We're still trying to get to a thousand reviews yeah. on Apple Podcasts. We are close. But if we get to a thousand, that's a great Ooh. promise. We'll air one of these unadulterated, unfiltered <laughs> episodes of Brunch Talk where we just go. We just ramble. We'll reveal our deepest, <laughs> darkest secrets. You'll know everything. But... That's our promise to you if we get to a thousand reviews. So let's get those reviews in. Five stars, please. And in the body of the review, you can tell us or ask us a question, a brunch talk question, or tell us your deepest, darkest secret, whatever. You could do whatever. (laughs) That'd be amazing to get that in the review. Hey, it's anonymous, right? We don't know who anyone is. (laughs) It's like a confessional. It's like you're on an airplane. You're just sharing what you need to share. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Brunch Talk. We'll see you soon. 
See you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.